Hey guys, EVP Man here. Now, if you're looking for a desktop PC that's gonna be low profile, we're talking about literally something that could disappear behind your monitor, well, this is the video for you. Because today we're taking a look at the Intel Nook Mini PC. Uh, this is a 12th generation uh, Core i5 Mini PC that packs a lot of power, has a super duper small footprint, and disappears, literally disappears, because you could put this under your desk or behind your monitor. So let's check out the specs, we'll see how it performs, and who knows, maybe this is gonna be your next school PC, your work PC, or your business PC. Look how small this guy is. Let's go check him out. Now this mini PC has a 12th generation Core i5 1240p processor, 32 gig of RAM, 512 gig uh, M.2 SSD built in, Windows 11 Pro, and while they claim that's a gaming desktop, I'll say that you could use it for some light gaming, but not significant gaming. Uh, for me, uh, this is more a, of a desktop replacement for someone that's really looking for a business computer, is looking for someone who's doing PowerPoints. If you're gonna be streaming, you can use it for streaming too. And also something that you wanna be able to have dual 4K displays, because you can have two 4K displays connected to this guy. It has Wi-Fi 6E, and then also has an Intel Iris XE graphics card. Now. This is a super compact solution and it's ultra quiet too. So let's take a closer look. We'll see how it performs in our tests. And you know, this may be your next mini PC. Now I've been running this mini PC for the last three weeks and using it for our day-to-day -day work um, here at home and also for our business. And as you can see here, uh, first of all, this is small. I'm gonna put my hand right over it. It's super tiny. And the funny thing about this is that the power brick is almost as large as the PC. Check out this power brick. This is a big boy. So um, put it right here. Notice that like two of these would be the size of the PC. So it comes with the power brick, also comes with some additional adapters that you'd use. But this is really small. And not only is it small, but it's really quiet too. A couple cool things that you'll see here that are important. Uh, you do have a security cable lock connection here that you can connect this to so that you can tie this down if that's something that you want to do. Uh, you also then have here on the back your USB uh, ports. Actually, this is the front here. You have two USB ports that you'll be able to use, and then you have a headphone jack here and your power button. You have some venting on each side, and this is uber quiet, right? It doesn't make a lot of noise at all. It's whisper quiet. Now, on the back, this is where you start seeing some of the connections. And we talked about this. First of all, here's your HDMI 1 and your HDMI 2 because you can connect two HDMIs to this, giving you two 4K monitors, which is does really, really well here, right? And I was running streaming content, um, working on one monitor, doing Zoom, doing WebEx, go to meeting, all those things worked fine, no problem. It does have gigabit out, and then it also has some two additional uh, USB in the back really, really simple, um, simple implementation here, right? And literally, that's all there is to it. So let's uh, run some uh, benchmark tests so you can see how well it performs. All right, guys, so let's take a look at some of the benchmark results. Um, overall PC, uh, from a gaming perspective, it's interesting that it's rated at a 22%, uh, which is um, a little bit lower for, than we would have expected. Uh, desktop, definitely uh, puts it in the category of an aircraft carrier, which means it's performing extremely well. And from a workstation perspective, it had also a similar score that it had here in the gaming area. So let's take a look at each one of the individual things here. And as you can see here, it is identifying the, the device as it should. Let's go ahead and close this really quick. Uh, you know, that it is an Intel uh, Nook, and you can see the model number. You can see the available memory that it has. You can see also the resolution it's running and the fact that it is running Windows 11. And uh, what we'll do is we'll continue to come down and look at some of the areas where it did really well and some of the areas that it didn't do that well. And, and then we'll talk about what is this best suited for based on these findings. So here you can see from a processor perspective, it is doing extremely well, right? So it's basically um, scoring way above expectations, 89th percentile, which is good for um, a device of this type. And think again, think about the uh, actual form factor, how small this is. So this is a definitely a check check for me. Now over here, it's, uh, it's the graphics card, right? So it's basically saying that the graphics card is, is performing a little bit below expert expectations. Now, this is really looking at this in the area of gaming, of, of really high, uh, gaming. If you're gonna use this desktop for, let's say, uh, for Netflix, for Hulu, for, you know, 
any kind of video service. If you're going to use this desktop for video services, for streaming services, you'll be fine in that area. But it looks like it's definitely not one that's going to perform um, in some of the more high intense uh, gaming scenarios. And therefore, it has a lower uh, rating here because of this Intel XE graphics card. So just be aware of it. Okay. Now, as we go down, we look at uh, more areas. And this is, again, the uh, solid state drive. And the solid state drive is performing really well. Uh, better than expected. You can see here it's uh, 57 percentile, 207 percent. It puts it in the outstanding mode. So that is really good. And this gives me a lot of high confidence in this device being uh, great for uh, work from home, running Zoom, running WebEx. If you're running word processors, you know, that kind of stuff, browsing the web. And again, streaming is going to be good. Uh, when you go to the memory, here's another area. Outstanding, 94.2 percent in the benchmark and you can see how it is performing way above expectations, which is good too, which again gives me that, that confidence that we just mentioned. So uh, when you look at the areas that it really worried, um, worried me at first, but I think I'm, I'm much more comfortable now, is in the area of the graphics card, but you have one area, two areas, three areas. It looks like three out of four um, actually ranked really well. The only area that kind of uh, brought the device down was the graphics card. And that could be expected because of the, the actual form factor. I haven't really seen a mini PC that does extremely well in this area. So I'm not going to be over judgy uh, because, again, this is not a full desktop. It doesn't have a full desktop graphics card, and you wouldn't be able to expect that. Now, one other thing I wanted to highlight for you is that, you know, the experience is a full window. So let's see what version of Windows they have here. So I'm going to go in here and choose a Windows version. So we'll go into system information. And we're looking for um, the 11 Pro because that's what we were told this would have. And we can see that right here. So we have Windows 11 Pro, uh, which is great. That's what we were looking for. Uh, and then you can see um, all the other configuration options are there. This is a 12th gen Intel processor, which is fantastic. Uh, we have also, uh, we're gonna look at memory. You can see that you have the memory as described is there. And then uh, you use also um, all the other items right, right here. We're going to keep on going down and see what else we see. So this, this looks good. If we go into the hardware components, uh, let's see, is there anything here in the resources area that we want to look at? No, that won't give us any information. If we look at the components, is there anything here? Eh, no, we have storage we can take a look at. Let's see what it says for storage. And we're going to look at the drive. And then here we see that we do have that. 475 gig hard drive. It's actually a little bit more than that. So it's half, uh, half a terabyte. You can see that right here, 512 uh, gigabytes. But again, operating system takes up some, some space. And then that brings us down to 475. Um, that's not bad, I'll tell you. Uh, that is, uh, you know, just Windows taking up some space. All I have is the Chrome browser installed on here and the testing software. And so that still gives you a great amount of space for, again, the use of this specific machine. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.